How was our universe born? What existed before it came into being? The question of the origin of the universe with all its known and as yet unknown properties has intrigued humanity for centuries. Scientific data have led to the conclusion that our universe was born about 15 billion years ago as a result of the Big Bang. But what exactly exploded at that moment and what existed before the Big Bang remained a mystery. However, scientists have made significant progress in resolving these questions, and the overall picture of the universe's first moments is now quite well drawn. At the beginning of the 20th century, there were only two concepts about the origin of the universe. Scientists believed that the universe was eternal and unchanging, while religious thinkers claimed it was created and would eventually come to an end. However, the 20th century upended many established views and introduced new ideas explaining the structure of the cosmos. One of the greatest achievements of the past century is the elucidation of how the universe in which we live came into being, along with the hypotheses about its future. A fundamental discovery was that the universe is expanding. This fact forced scientists to re-evaluate traditional cosmological theories and laid the foundation for a new field of physics that studies the processes of the creation and disappearance of worlds. In the 1920s, Edwin Hubble discovered that the light from distant galaxies has a red tint, which becomes more pronounced with increasing distance. This effect, known as redshift, implies that galaxies are moving away from us, with the speed of this motion being proportional to the distance. Redshift is explained by the Doppler effect, which shows that the wavelength of light changes depending on the speed of the light source. Since more distant galaxies appear redder, it was suggested that they are moving away at a greater speed. Not individual stars or galaxies are moving apart, but entire clusters of galaxies. The stars and galaxies closest to us are bound by gravity and form stable structures. But in every direction we look, we see clusters of galaxies moving away from us at about the same speed. This can create the illusion that our galaxy is the center of the universe, but it is not. No matter where an observer is located, they will see the same pattern. All galaxies are moving apart from each other. However, if everything in the universe is moving apart, there must have been a time when everything was concentrated at one point. This moment is called the Big Bang. At that time, the temperature was incredibly high, leading to the emission of a vast amount of energy and light. Over time, everything cooled, and the radiation spread throughout the expanding space. But the echo of the Big Bang must have persisted, and it can still be observed today in the form of the cosmic microwave background radiation. The first significant confirmation of this event came in 1964 when American radio astronomers Robert Wilson and Arno Penzias discovered relic electromagnetic radiation with a temperature of about 3 degree on the Kelvin scale, about minus 270 degrees Celsius. This discovery, which caught scientists by surprise, provided compelling evidence that the Big Bang indeed occurred and that the early universe was extremely hot. The Big Bang theory provided explanations for many issues that had troubled cosmology. However, along with the solved problems, it also raised new questions. What existed before the Big Bang? What caused the initial heating of the universe to an unimaginable temperature? The Big Bang theory couldn't offer a complete explanation for everything that happens in the universe. For a long time, it seemed impossible to progress further. But in the 1980s, thanks to the research of Russian physicists Edward Gleiner and Alexei Starobinsky, as well as American physicist Alan Guth, a new concept was proposed, the ultra-rapid inflationary expansion of the universe. 
This phenomenon's description is based on the principles of theoretical physics, such as Einstein's general theory of relativity and quantum field theory. Today, inflation is considered a generally accepted hypothesis that explains the initial phase of the universe before the Big Bang. Inflation is a period in the history of the universe when it expanded at an incredible rate. Describing this phase is challenging because it involves both very small and very large magnitudes, which are hard to conceptualize. To understand what inflation is, you can use the analogy of a snowball rolling down a mountainside. Imagine a mountain covered in snow. If you start rolling a small snowball from the top, it will grow as it moves downhill, gathering more and more snow, stones, and branches. As the snowball increases in size, it gains speed, and if it reaches a cliff, it might break apart, scattering into many pieces. The process of inflation can be thought of as the rapid growth of a snowball that suddenly begins to increase in size. The inflaton field, a hypothetical component of space, is the force that initiates inflation. Like the snow covering the slope, it fills all of space. At some point, a random fluctuation occurs, creating a small region of uniform inflaton field. When we talk about a random fluctuation, it means a spontaneous, unpredictable change in space that leads to the formation of a specific area or structure. In this case, we're referring to something happening within the inflaton field, a hypothetical form of energy, which results in the formation of a small region with certain properties. A homogeneous inflaton field indicates that the values of the inflaton field are the same or nearly the same across this new region. This differs from a situation where the field's values vary in different parts of space. Thus, when a random fluctuation occurs in the inflaton field, it means that a small zone arises in the space filled by this field, where the field's characteristics become consistent or homogeneous. This fluctuation, this spontaneous change in state, sets off a chain of events leading to the rapid expansion of the universe, which we call inflation. This region begins to expand at an enormous rate, the duration of this inflationary period was extremely brief, just a few nanoseconds, but during this time, the universe expanded by 10 septillion times. By the end of inflation, it grew to over one centimeter in diameter. When inflation ends, the inflaton field reaches its energy minimum. This moment can be compared to when the snowball reaches the cliff and breaks apart. The kinetic energy accumulated during inflation is transformed into matter, causing the universe to heat up. This process is known as the Big Bang. The mountain in our analogy might be complex, with slopes, valleys, and elevations. At every point where a fluctuation in the inflaton field occurs, a new universe might be born, each with its own development path. Some universes might be conducive to intelligent life like ours, while others might not have the right conditions for it. Despite the rigorous scientific calculations that explain inflation, many questions remain. For example, what caused this fluctuation to occur? Why is the universe so homogeneous when explosions usually lead to chaos? And what existed before the Big Bang? Although inflation explains a lot, it leaves room for further exploration and marveling at the mysteries of the universe. Our universe is now filled with stars, galaxies, and hidden mass, and it seems like the total amount of energy and mass is simply colossal. It's hard to imagine how all of this could have fit into the initial point from which the universe originated. However, there's a key aspect that helps explain why the universe could have been born from such a small volume. Beyond visible matter, there exists a gravitational field in the universe whose energy is negative. Interestingly, 
The energy of gravity in our universe perfectly offsets the positive energy contained in material objects like particles, planets, and stars. This means that the total energy and mass of the universe ultimately add up to nearly zero, which aligns with the law of conservation of energy. This characteristic explains why the nascent universe didn't immediately turn into a massive black hole upon its emergence. Since its total mass was extremely small, a collapse was impossible. Only at later stages of development did sufficient clusters of matter form, creating gravitational fields from which even light could not escape. Elementary particles that would eventually form stars began to appear when the inflaton field reached its minimum potential energy, and the Big Bang occurred. During the inflationary period, the area occupied by the inflaton field expanded much faster than the speed of light. This didn't violate the theory of relativity, as the movement was not material but rather represented the expansion of the very boundary of space where the universe was forming. Imagine a rapidly moving beam of light. Its movement across the moon's surface could be faster than the speed of light, but that doesn't mean anything physical is moving at such a speed. Thus, despite the rapid expansion, there was no resistance from the surrounding medium because it essentially didn't exist for the newly formed space. An internal observer within the expanding space would see a universe filled with energy in the form of particles and photons. If they tried to measure the total mass of all this energy, they would get a number that's hard to imagine in real life because it greatly exceeds the number of atoms in the universe. The distances between particles increased quickly due to the ongoing expansion of the universe but gravitational forces gradually slowed this process. Thus, after the inflationary period ended, the rate of the universe's expansion began to decelerate, but it is still continuing today. This approach, which views the universe through the lens of the inflaton field and energy compensation, might be complex to understand. But modern scientists believe it to be accurate, based on confirmed laws of physics. Although we cannot see the edges of the universe since they are beyond our vision, we can study its expansion and continue uncovering new cosmic mysteries. After its birth, the universe rapidly expanded and cooled, mainly due to the swift increase in space. As this expansion continued, the wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation, which are associated with temperature, lengthened, leading to a decrease in temperature. This is why the cosmic microwave background radiation, originating from the early universe, has such a low temperature today. As the universe expanded, the composition of matter changed as well. Quarks combined to form protons and neutrons, resulting in the emergence of familiar elementary particles such as protons, neutrons, electrons, neutrinos, and photons. There were also antiparticles, but there were fewer of them than particles. This slight asymmetry saved our world from complete annihilation, which might have occurred if the number of particles and antiparticles had been equal. The cosmic microwave background radiation that we observe today is a result of the annihilation of particles and antiparticles. Initially, the energy of this radiation was high, but due to the universe's expansion and cooling, it has significantly decreased. Currently, the energy of the cosmic microwave background radiation is tens of thousands of times lower than that of massive elementary particles, when the temperature of the universe dropped to 10 to the power of 10 Kelvin, which occurred about one minute after the Big Bang, protons and neutrons were able to combine to form the nuclei of deuterium, tritium, and helium. This process was similar to what happens in thermonuclear bombs or nuclear reactors. Modern calculations of the amount of light elements in the universe are in good agreement with observations, confirming that the physical laws known to us were in effect from the first seconds of the universe's existence. The inflationary period, 
during which all of space expanded rapidly, led to the emergence of energy density in homogeneities. Some regions had more energy than others, causing them to grow faster. These regions with slightly higher particle density became the very seeds from which galaxies and stars formed. Under the influence of gravity, these denser regions contracted, laying the foundations for new structures in the cosmos. Scientists who supported the inflation theory suggested that temperature fluctuations in the cosmic microwave background radiation could be evidence of these inhomogeneities. In 1992, the Russian satellite Relit-1 and the American COB satellite confirmed this by detecting slight temperature deviations. These fluctuations became evidence for the inflationary theory and helped explain how galaxies and stars could have formed from the initial structures that emerged after the Big Bang. The current universe is ideally suited for life, and this favorable period will continue for many billions of years. Stars will be born and die, galaxies will continue to spin and collide, and galaxy clusters will drift further apart. This gives humanity plenty of time to thrive and evolve. However, the concept of now for an immense universe like ours is not as straightforward. For example, when we observe quasars at a distance of 10 billion light years from Earth, we see them as they were 10 billion years ago. The further we look into the depths of the universe, the earlier the period of its development we observe. Scientists can explain most of the universe's properties from the moment it was 10 to the power of minus 42 seconds old to the present day. They are able to trace the formation of galaxies and even predict the future of the universe. However, there are some mysteries, such as the nature of dark matter and dark energy. Dark matter accounts for a significant portion of the universe's mass, but remains invisible, while dark energy is responsible for the accelerated expansion of the universe. In 1998, the discovery of anomalies in Hubble's law led to the revelation of dark energy. Before that point, it was believed that the energy of the vacuum was zero, since a vacuum is a state where particles are absent. However, as it turned out, the vacuum can possess energy, and this energy is responsible for the acceleration of the universe's expansion. Now that vacuum energy has been confirmed, scenarios for the future of the universe are changing. If vacuum energy is constant and positive, the universe will continue to expand indefinitely, gradually cooling over time. This means that one day, galaxies will spread so far apart that they will become invisible, leaving humanity with only a few nearby galaxies. However, if the energy density exceeds a critical threshold, the universe may start to contract, leading to a final compression and a big crunch. Regardless of what the future holds, humanity has time to grow and adapt. Perhaps one day we will be able to answer all the questions about how our universe is structured and what its future holds, or even find a way to explore other universes.